<clears throat> peace, peace, family. Hope everybody is doing great today. It's finally kind of warming up here in Omaha. And a sunny day has been kind of gloomy these past few days. All right, today we're doing a quick video talking about idolization of athletes and entertainers and how this is hurting us and really the effects of the high idolization of our athletes and entertainers and a lot of the behaviors that are exhibited from our athletes and entertainers and how it how the idolization is going to affect our youth in the future and some of the harmful results from being bred to put so much value and really time and effort into a sports figure or a movie star, a rapper, so on and so forth. But those are the primary three categories that they use black entertainers, you know, the athletes, the actors and comedians, and then the musicians and the singers. So, of course, we are going to go straight to the definition before we <clears throat> step into the information. The word idolize means to admire, revere, or love greatly or excessively. So, what I will focus on with the definition right there is excessively. So, the excessive love of an individual, when oftentimes they're not, these people that we have this excess of love for do not show that love in return, could care less about us, especially our people as a whole on a uh, on a macro level and they don't do much outside of their job what they're paid to do um many of these athletes today have become highly watered down in regards to speaking out on social or political injustice and the few who do choose to take that route are punished we see colin kaepernick just got signed to the Jaguars and he was very outspoken in regards to his political views with this uh, previous presidential selection and he also expressed how he felt about police brutality, the mistreatment of colored people on a global spectrum and his disapproval with the behaviors of the American government and him of course, not standing for the national anthem. He just now received the contract, and I'm sure the the numbers and logistics. He's being over. I mean, he's being underpaid. And on another note, with Colin Kaepernick, because we are going to start off with athletes, and we can go straight to the NFL, and then the NBA, and then we'll go to college. And we're primarily going to focus on the NFL and NBA because this is where. We see a majority of our athletes, and this is where a majority of the money in the financial exploitation is going on with black athletes. Uh, but back on back to Colin Kaepernick, I just saw an article, or I think it was um, actually on ESPN, and it had showed how Kaepernick is standing outside of probation or parole offices handing free tuxedos out to brothers. And, and I'm sure, I don't know if he got some for the sisters too, but... You know, just the fact that this is one of the not necessarily creme de la creme of the NFL players. He's definitely not on one of the most lucrative contracts of a lot of these NFL players, yet he's still using his funds and his resources to find find ways to make small changes. Of course, Kaepernick ain't out here doing stuff to change the world, but he may change the world or change the circumstances for the people that he touches or the individuals that he helps. So we also have to look at the fact that Colin Kaepernick is not one of your highest paid players, yet we see him out here openly in the turf doing the work. There are individuals within the NFL, as we just solely focus on the NFL, who do 
put money into different organizations who do have different foundations, who do help black organizations. But a lot of times they do a lot of this behind the scenes. And, it, and, and it's not to say that we shouldn't have people working behind the scenes and we shouldn't have people doing things where, without our enemy or without everybody openly knowing. But Colin Kaepernick shouldn't be one of the main people that we see who's openly showing that I'm spending my funds towards fighting against white supremacy. I'm spending my funds towards uplifting black people. And we don't know everything he does with his money. But like I said, we can openly see him working to try to make some type of changes. Oftentimes they're not. These athletes are scared to be publicly shown helping their people. They're afraid of the backlash that they may receive from marketing, um, the uh, the 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 um, the commercials, the the extra perks that comes with not being pro-black or not openly showing that you're for your people or that you're for helping your people or that you're even aware of the racism and white supremacy that's going on in the world. So. A lot of the athletes, I wouldn't say a lot of them, but some of the NFL athletes are doing things on the back end, and, and I'm not knocking them for doing that, but when are we going to stop being scared to openly do things for our people or to publicly show that we are doing things for our people and not be scared because we may not get a couple dollars? Because Colin Kaepernick's not make in regards to NFL money, he's not making great money in regards to the compensation of NFL players, yet he's still showing that I'm willing to put the funds I do have or some of the funds I do have on the line. And he put funds on the line by overtly not standing for the national anthem, letting people know I'm not going to vote, so on and so forth. So he already took a hit by just being real and being thorough in that. And he's still finding ways to take small amounts of money or large amounts of money. I don't know the logistics or got the receipts, but he's still finding ways to try to make a difference. When we have individuals who do have the money and may be doing some things, but they're scared. And then we uh, on a on a large spectrum, we still don't have enough of our athletes, especially in the NFL, as we focus in on them right now, who are doing anything for our people at all whether that be whether that be refurbishing and um remodifying hoods and poverty in rich neighborhoods whether that be every nfl athlete went back to the hood they came from or the area they came from and put money back into it refurbished it started to get african-based schools after school programs and centers and so on and so forth we need more than just uh the boys and girls clubs and whatever uh, after school programs that the schools may have or different communities may have because like I alluded to in my prior video a lot of these after school programs aren't necessarily stimulating the children's academic mind or instilling any discipline morals or or uh principles within them a lot of times when our kids are going to after school programs it's almost a free for all it's little to no structure if there is any structure and the kids are getting little to no academic stimulation because a lot of these programs don't even require that. And even if some say they do and still don't stick to the requirements. So I feel like with all of the black athletes that we have in the NFL, a lot more of our projects and neighborhoods should be refurbished. A lot more of our community should have a multitude of African based and African centered programs for our children and, and not just African based, but earth based planet-based, environmentally friendly-based programs, because we have to get into that as well, taking care of the planet and taking care of the earth. But we see little to none of this. Partially, a lot of a lot of the athletes could care, could care less about these things. A lot of the athletes have the mindset, I got mine. I hope you get yours. We know how individuals within a poverty-ridden community react on a common basis when they receive money. It's the mindset that I got out the hood, I got my paycheck, I got my meal ticket. I hope that you can find a way to get yours, but I'm not gonna feel bad because you didn't make it out because I'm out of here. So I, I'm, I'm good now. For whatever end up happening to y'all, I, I don't know, but I'm getting away from it. And I'm not knocking people for getting away from the hood. But we have to go back and find ways to refurbish and replenish the hood and the environments that we come from. 
there are a lot of NFL players that live privileged lives. They, they fathers or different people in their family may have been athletes, so they never had to even go through being immersed in the hood or being connected to a poverty written environment. They may have lived a, a spoon, uh, lived their life with a silver or a golden spoon. So they didn't. So that's not really their reality. So they may not even think to give back because they've never even gone through it. But I feel that there's no excuse for the NFL players who have, have gone through the struggles of going up in the hood, going up in a, in a gang written environment, in a poverty infested environment. And to go and get that check and get that bread and only look out for self or splurge and and, and and trick off your money to the point where ESPN is able to make a whole 30 for 30 series on black NFL athletes or black athletes, I think, in general going broke. That's a shame that, that they have enough. They have enough cases that they can make an entire show and have multiple segments on black players and black athletes overspending their money. So. There's no excuse for you to go run and overspend your money, yet you're putting little to nothing back into the black community. You're putting little to nothing into black-owned businesses. You're not doing much to get yourself in a position to where after you retire, you have income streams and you have ways to not just fill up your pockets or keep your pockets full, but you created ways to get the pockets full for other individuals who look just like you, who won't have the same opportunities, who will not get the chance to be a pro athlete. So a lot of our athletes are not using their platform to the benefit of their people. They're using the platform to their benefit for endorsements, for, for shoe deals, for, for clothing deals, and so on and so forth. And we have to have to understand that it must be reversed. If we are going to be buying these jerseys, buying these games, watching these games, we have to be invested. We have to be taken into consideration. It's more than just for entertainment. Okay, it, it, it does start with entertainment, especially in a Eurocentric Greco-Roman society, which is all about leisure and entertainment and, and watching individuals show off their physical prowess so that I can be entertained and so I can pass time. But when we look in depth at this, it makes totally no sense for black athletes to be the majority of the players in the NFL, yet black communities are not getting even a fraction of the money that the NFL is receiving. Most black communities are spending more money or spending money for the NFL, whether it be ticket sales, jersey purchases, the, the cable packages, NFL Sunday packages, so on and so forth. We're spending more money than we're getting back, yet the entire NFL industry is circumvent on Black athletes being able to play, being able to put in the kinesthetic energy required. So with our athletes putting their bodies at risk, many of them will deal with physical ailments for the rest of their lives. We've seen the movie Concussion. If not, check that movie out. That's deep neuroscience. We understand the fact that these athletes get concussions, ACL tears, MCL tears, so on and so forth. So outside of the fact that you're putting your body on the line and just recently where these athletes where the athletes in the NFL are given the proper insurance for the retirement plans, because a lot of these athletes were not getting the proper retirement insurance. So while you're in the league, you got stellar insurance, of course, because you're my property. I own you. You know, I need you. I need you when you get hurt to have the top medical staff to repair you so you can go make money for me. Yet when you retire and you're no longer bringing me hundreds of thousands of dollars um a, a game you're you're not as much value to me so now i'm gonna lower the insurance standards for you your insurance standards aren't going to be as high because you're not as high up on my list the young buck underneath you is now ready to take your wages in the conversation that i gave you and to have me come out of pocket on the exceptional insurance plan now i really don't need you you can go 
uh, and, and, and some NFL players are very aware of this, yet they stay on cold because they know that or they feel that this is all that I have. This is my only opportunity. This is my only income stream. This is my only platform because we get comfortable. And when we get comfortable, we become vulnerable. So a lot of a lot of NFL players and, and, and black athletes, entertainers, so on and so forth, you get those contracts, you get that money, you get comfortable. And once you get comfortable, you don't ever want to lose the perks. So you're not willing to, to stand up for yours or just stand up for your people because you know that that's going to result in losing financial compensation. You know that's going to result in loss of endorsements, so on and so forth, loss of loss of employment opportunities. Like I alluded to earlier, how they did Kaepernick. He just now getting signed. So a lot of our a lot of our athletes are scared. And they're the ones putting all the, everything at risk. They're the ones putting their bodies on the line. They're the ones putting their their futures on the line, their well-being, their physical ability as they retire. And as they go into their, their 40s and their 50s, they're putting all of that on the line. Experiences with their family and with their wives, they're putting that on the line. Yet they're scared to step up and speak out towards the issues that we are dealing with as a whole, as a group of people, they, they they perform and go on about the entertainment as if we don't matter. And to some of them, we don't matter. To some of the athletes, we don't matter because when they look into the stands, they don't see a majority of us in the stands. Of course, when they look at the owners and they may be in board meetings, they definitely don't see a lot of us who are in control, who are bringing in the money. But a lot of these athletes look at it like I look into the crowd, I see white people, I see Asians, I see Mexicans. I see so many different groups of people. What makes you think I'm supposed to be sacrificing or I'm supposed to do something specifically for you? You're not even the one bringing me in, the bringing, bringing in money or, you, or you're not one of the primary people consuming to get money brought in so that they can pay me. So sometimes we, we deal with our athletes who have that mindset where it's like they disassociate from blacks because they don't see blacks out there really bringing them in the money or they don't see only black people out there supporting them. They see uh, an array of individuals, a plethora of different races, the so-called melting pot that we live in in America. So that also plays a factor into why we don't see athletes who are willing to go hard for us or stand up for blacks or stand up for their people or even speak out. And then when they do speak out, Oftentimes, it's still in a submissive manner. It's still in a way in which we aren't standing and saying, when this happens, this is going to be the result. It's still more so in that begging in, in, in that subsidiary role where it's like, well, we need you guys to stop doing this. And we've been dealing with all of this and, and we're tired of crying and we're tired of the police killings and we're, and, and we're upset and we're frustrated and we've had it to hear. But what are you going to do? You know, D-Wade, LeBron and Carmelo and Chris Paul at the SBs, you know, they spoke out against some of the social injustice and the political injustice. But when are we going to say, and until these things change, you won't see us suit up anymore. But a lot of these athletes are signed over to the contract, so they're very hesitant. A lot of them are scared to lose that money or to get whatever consequence or punishment they will receive from not abiding by that contract and playing every night like they signed off and said they would as long as they're not injured or whatever the stipulations may be for them to not play every night. They're scared to receive the financial penalty for doing these things. When many of our athletes, especially, you know, Carmelo, LeBron and them, if they chose to sit out for the rest of if they chose to never dribble a ball and get paid for basketball again, as long as they use their funds in a mature and responsible manner they wouldn't need a basketball check ever again to live a a highly sustainable and comfortable life so we have individuals who have made it climbed up the totem pole and still aren't willing to risk money when they have enough money for future generations within their family and to live their life comfortably until they pass away so yet we still see money outweighs by people money outweighs the people that you come from money outweighs your your populace money outweighs your 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 race of people because a lot of times we're not connected as a whole macro group of blacks and oftentimes the money 
is the biggest way to get us divided or it's the biggest way to make us be like, well, they hating because they don't got money or I need money so I can get away from them. Or the main reason why they act like that is because they don't got money. And some people do act certain ways because they have money, but it's people, but some, I'll say this, the biggest thieves <laughs> and the people who are exploiting individuals and getting over on people illegally the most are the richest people in the planet. Okay. So we, we can't just associate negative behavior with being broke when some of the most cruel individuals on the planet are billionaires, you know, multi-billionaires. So we always have to keep that in mind also. But the main the main point that I'm making here is the the willingness to not sacrifice monetary compensation for the well-being or the better good of your people. OK, or, or to let to or to let the owners and the organization know there are things that are bigger than this game. And, and on that point, I'll make this point that I that I want to touch on is at a, at a point in time as black men, as grown adult black men. Our our most lucrative contracts and the men who make the most money should not be men who play games. I'm not knocking basketball players or athletes and so on and so forth because everybody has their gift. But there has to come a point in time where the most important conversation or the most important people or the people who are idolized the most or, or the people with the most financial ability to assist and do things are the athletes or people who play games. Because life is not a game, especially for the black man and especially for how competitive it is to even get into the NBA and I'm going to get into some stats real quickly once I finish this point. But to be solely reliant on games or or to have the most lucrative financial black people, black men especially, be people who play games, we got to get out of that. We got to get out of that because life is not a game. Life is not for play play. Everything, everything is not about scores and, and dribbling and highlights okay there are things more serious than games and we talking about we talking about simple games we ain't even talking about sophisticated games like chess and things of that nature we're talking about physical games is where black men are getting their most money is where is grown men who play games are the men who our children idolize the most We all are controlled by European structure. We all are controlled by European dollars when it comes to receiving money, receiving a check, and getting compensation. The people who are most reliant on the European dollar and then vice versa because the European wouldn't even have that dollar to sign off and give you without the athletes. But our men, the men who, who, whose checks and whose money is most relying on that European dollar are the ones our children our children idolize the most. The ones who our kids can't get a hold of, the ones who we got to spend $200, $300, sacrifice time, sacrifice paychecks to go see these players, and most of us not from the front row, not right there in person. We the ones spending that money to go see these people who don't even have an opportunity to even speak to our children. To even say, have a one-on-one -on -one with our children. These are the ones who influence and who our children idolize and who inspire our children the most. These are the occupations that our children desire the most. Playing games or, or being played, being exploited on a grand scale, being exploited just to exploit your people. But your exploitation is not always visible because you can get people the athletes get blinded by the money it's hard it's hard to think you're getting exploited when you're making a hundred million until you wake up and understand the owner making three four billion make plus that the Lakers situation i mean the clipper situation we know the owner was racist he's saying ra racial epithets which we know is not just the clippers owners uh, the, Cl the clippers owner and on that, a lot of our athletes deal with that too. Hearing racial slurs and epithets from fans. The uh the brother uh Adam Jones in the in the Major League Baseball was just dealing with that up in uh Boston. Racial epithets from fans. So 
So we even to the point now where we playing a game, we getting paid for the game. The individuals who paying us are really banking in because they own everything. They own the entire team. And yet when we come in here, we still dealing with racial epithets. We still dealing with racial slurs while supposedly playing this game and they're supposed to be fans. It's more so about entertainment, especially for those Europeans. There are, probably, there are a lot of European and Asian and Mexican diehard fans and so on and so forth, but it's entertainment. You know it's entertainment when they start to hit you with the racial slurs, black man. You know it's not because they really love you or they really care about you. They love the entertainment. They love your ability to be a, a elite athlete and perform. It's not about how they really feel about you or a connection to you. It's about the entertainment value. A majority of our kids want to be athletes, want to be rappers, want to be actors, want to be entertainers. Yet it is highly difficult to do it. Only a few of us going to make it. Only probably one to three percent of the people that we know or people who are talented in a sport in music or, or funny or great actors and so on and so forth will actually get paid and compensated to do that. So we got our kids wanting to get into careers in which are the most difficult to do, are the most complicated to get into, have the most competition base in the world probably. Because when we, when we get groups of our kids together, it's the same answer. Basketball player, football player, actor, comedian, rapper, singer, same stuff over and over and over. Highly competitive. It's, di it's difficult. It's difficult for the creme de la creme. It's difficult for some of the best in the state to get into the NBA. And on that, I want to go into this. I want to go into this. Nope, I'm away because we still on the NFL. But it's difficult. It's highly competitive. And we can get and we're going to get into we're going to really tie in the NBA, too, because the NFL is no different then the NBA in regards to the control, in regards to the white owner, the black players, the owner is totally dependent on the black players energy, athleticism, and ability and creativity to perform, which comes from the melanin. Because understand, if we did not have the melanin, that athletic creativity in the usage of the cerebellum in, in the in the uh in the neurological signal transfers, we wouldn't see crazy juke moves and spin moves on the football field and one hand catches and so on and so forth. We wouldn't see the, you know, the hezzy move and the crossover, you know, and the, and the step back and all of that. We wouldn't see all of that because all of that athletic creativity, all of that athletic innovation is solely succumbent on melanin. Melanin is a creative molecule, especially that neuromelanin within the brain, which even allows the cerebellum and the neurological cells and signals to even happen so that you can make that juke move or that amazing spin move or be so elusive in the open field or, or so or so athletic or such a high flyer. You know what I'm saying? So we got to even understand our biochemistry and our biological makeup assisted in the game even becoming more entertaining. Because without without melanin, we would just see running backs hitting the hole and running straight. You wouldn't see you would you wouldn't see the spins and and, and the cuts and, and and the um and the jump cuts and all and then in the stiff arms. You wouldn't see all that. You you would just see straight form shots, form shots, layups. You wouldn't see the the double clutch reverse dunks and, and three sixty alley oops. You wouldn't see all of that. Because that's a that's a creative ability through melanin to even to even think in your mind to physically manifest that. <clears throat> so we can never overlook that either. The fact that without the black athlete, the sports weren't even able to become a mega industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. It was relying not only on the black athlete and the athleticism, but the melanin, the neuromelanin and the cerebellum and the creativity. To make to make the sport so revolutionary, to be so innovative with the moves, it took the melanin. It took the melanin. <clears throat> we spoke about it. We spoke about 
we spoke about how a lot of the athletes are not connected with the, with the struggle of the black people anymore or with the black struggle as a whole. That's a big issue and another reason why we don't see enough of the funds or the income or really anything getting pushed back or brought back to our people. It's been a detriment more than it's been of any assistance to our people to go through that. Another thing that we're dealing with too is the NCAA and the scholarship money does not equate to the colleges really Really, it doesn't equate to how much the college is going to get off the athlete. The money that the college is getting off the athlete is going to outweigh the compensation that the athletes will receive on the back end from the scholarships. The scholarships really are not going to do much but keep the players there for a year, if that, for the one-and-done kids. And some of the players are actually in a thorough and efficient major so they'll get the proper compensation or just have an opportunity to get decent compensation outside of college for those who aren't going to go to the NBA. But a lot of these colleges get away with just continuously providing a couple one-year scholarships because many of our black athletes are one and done. They're going in and they're going right to the NBA. So the college doesn't even have to worry about compensating them four years for their uh for their athletic scholarship. Most of the colleges for the top players, they give you a year and then you out of there. So then we got to understand, too, you, you're not getting that so-called education that they promoting and then you in and out. So you, you you probably not really going hard in class. You're not overly focused on your academics and what you have to do on the school side because, you know, I'm such a premier athlete. After this year, I'm out of here. I'm not even about to be playing for them no more. And. On that, too, the scholarship money that they give these players, it doesn't even equate to the amount of money that the basketball and the football sport brings in for the college. Because many colleges use the basketball and football money to take care of the entire athletic department. So that's something that is overlooked and that we got to really think about as well is we got these two sports. The whole athletic department is funded on these two sports. The coaches get paid multi-millions in these two sports, basketball and football. And yet our players is supposed to get compensated with a scholarship. All of the players ain't even on scholarships. Some of our players is walk on. Some of our players didn't have the so-called grades to get the scholarship or the test scores. Okay, so it's not it's not adding up. It's not really um it's not really an equivalent exchange when we look at it. You're getting you're getting billions and they're getting, you know, a twenty thousand dollar scholarship, thirty thousand dollar scholarship. Maybe some for the for the creme de la creme school, seventy thousand dollars. But y'all getting billions, literally billions, merchandise. Ticket sales, parking, all of that. <clears throat> One other thing, especially for our young athletes, they start to get narcissists. We can see a little bit of that in the NFL draft, just a flash what some of these players are wearing before they even get their names picked, before they even get their names called, before they even get an actual check. It's, it's getting real flashy, highly materialized, especially at the NFL draft for those of you who watched it, and it's starting to get narcissistic. We, we're starting to have our athletes get that narcissist mindset, especially when it comes to women. We got we got a lot of athletes who big into the strip club culture, which I totally think is ludicrous. Any athlete spending willing to spend 60 to 70 racks or even 10 racks at a strip club and not put that into a black community or into a black business or into their community. You really hurting us more than you helping. You're really hurting more than you're helping. And some people will say, well, they helping the strippers. They put money in the strippers. OK, but we really we all need youth and rights of passage programs that are African based everywhere in America. So a lot of our athletes can be putting their money towards that. Putting their money towards that is much more beneficial to our future than putting money towards strippers. Let's just be honest. We got athletes who, if they if they not into the strippers, they're willing to spend 10 racks in on the bottles. Okay? And then back to the narcissism. The narcissism in that mindset that I, I'm, I'm untouchable because I'm a black athlete because I'm a black man with money. I'm untouchable. Now that starts to get into the promiscuity. 
in, in the misogynistic relationships. And now you think you can do anything to a woman. Now we start to create womanizers. Men who want to have three, four, and five different women, women or a different, a different woman every time they're on the road. Or they at the best strip club at the biggest cities when they got an away game. You know what I'm saying? Or, they, or you know, uh, not... Not to just call out, guys, I know it's a lot of cats who do it, but you know your boy Ezekiel Elliott had the little St. Patrick's Day issue. He pulling the chick breast out. You know, just just starting to do too much because you letting that money go to your head. You letting that popularity go to your head. You letting that contract go to your head. You letting the fact you on TV go to your head. So now we're starting to see the creation of what? That artificial Negro that I'm, that I'm writing that book about. Where you, you acting artificial... Due to the fact that you getting this money, you being artificial due to the fact that you now have the ability, you now have the ability to come in with hundreds of thousands of dollars. You got the ability to front on people. You got the ability to say, well, you know what? If I do get in trouble for this, I got the 20, 30,000 to pay for it. I got I got the ability to have a lawyer. I can do whatever I really want to do with the money that I got. It really ain't no thing. It's no problem. So once we start to see this go on, we see why our athletes are becoming narcissists. We see why our athletes are at a point where they feel like they can do anything to a woman. They can have any woman. I can be with whoever I want to be with. It don't really matter. So that's something that we got to understand and overstand because you don't want your children idolizing that type of person. That's not that's not what you want to be dealing with. That's not the type of young man you would want your child to become, if you follow what I'm saying. 